Hi everyone, this is Ms. Romani. During this lesson, we're going to be learning about lipids. When people think about lipids, they usually think of fats and oils. And sure, fats and oils are a very important category of lipids. But lipids also include the phospholipids, the steroids, and the waxes. And during this lesson, we will learn about the structure, about the properties, and about the functions of each category of lipids. Now the key characteristic that defines lipids is that they are largely made up of long hydrocarbon chains or hydrocarbon rings. Let's remember what you learned about polarity and apply it to the chemical structure of lipids. Most lipids have long hydrocarbon chains called fatty acids or hydrocarbon rings as part of their structure. These long chains or rings of just carbons bonded to hydrogen are nonpolar, which makes lipids, or at least part of them, hydrophobic or unable to dissolve in water. And as you can see, each category of lipids has its own unique structure, which means that they each play a different function in our bodies, like for example providing our bodies with energy and insulation, or making up the main structure of our cell membranes, or providing us with hormones and cholesterol or providing protection and a waterproof coating. So let's take a look at each of these types of lipids one at a time. First we have the fats and oils, which are called triglycerides. These are the lipids you're most familiar with because they are the ones that we consume as food, like olive oil, or butter, or the fat in bacon. The solids are called fats and the liquids are called oils. And their function in our bodies is to provide us with long-term energy storage. In the carbohydrates lesson, we learned that glycogen can store glucose for energy in our liver and in our muscle cells, so that we have it when our blood sugar levels drop and we need more energy. But these stores of glucose energy only last for a few hours, or a day at most. So this is where fats come in. Any extra sugar, or any extra energy providing nutrients that we don't need for immediate energy, are brought to our fat cells and converted into triglycerides. And there, they can store energy in their bonds for days, weeks, months, even years. And what makes fat such a great energy store is that molecules of triglycerides can store two times the amount of energy per gram than carbohydrates or proteins. And the reason for that is all the carbon to hydrogen bonds. And that's something that we will explore further in the Metabolic Processes Unit. Now, besides providing us with long-term energy stores, Fats are also important because they help us absorb and store vitamins. They also provide us with insulation so that we can keep our bodies warm. And they provide cushioning for our internal organs. Now to make a triglyceride, you need a 3-carbon molecule called glycerol and 3 fatty acids. As you can see, each glycerol has 3 hydroxyl groups and each fatty acid has a carboxyl group at one end of the long hydrocarbon chain. So a glycerol and three fatty acids react via a dehydration synthesis reaction. To do this, water needs to be removed from the reaction between the functional groups. This dehydration synthesis reaction of one glycerol and three fatty acids form a single triglyceride molecule, as well as three molecules of water. Each of the bonds formed by this reaction are called ester bonds and there are three of them in a single triglyceride. And don't forget, dehydration synthesis reactions form the bonds, but hydrolysis reactions break them by adding water. So triglycerides make up a huge variety of fats and oils, from olive oil to the fat in avocado or coconuts, uh, to the fat in nuts and animal fats like butter or bacon fats or the healthy fats found in salmon. And these fats and oils are obviously vastly different from each other, but they are all made of triglycerides. So let's take a look then at what makes different triglycerides different from each other. And the difference is their fatty acid tails. They can be different lengths depending on the fat or oil. Another difference is the presence or absence of double bonds between carbon in the fatty acid tails. Fatty acids without double bonds are called saturated fatty acids. 
while those with double bonds are called unsaturated fats. So let's take a look at each different type of fatty acid and discuss their properties. Let's start with saturated fatty acids. These fatty acids, like I said, only have single bonds between carbon atoms in their hydrocarbon chains. They're mostly found in animal fats, but some plants like, say, coconuts, for example, have um, a lot of saturated fats in them. One thing you may notice about animal fats, like say butter or cheese, or the fat in meat, is that they are all solids at room temperature. And the reason for that is the lack of double bonds in the chain. Without double bonds, the fatty acids form these straight chains. Well, more like a zigzag shape, but still, a straight chain. And that straight chain is able to stack close together to each other. And it is this closeness that gives them a larger surface area where they can form London dispersion forces between them. Remember that London dispersion forces are weak forces of attraction that can form between nonpolar molecules. And in the case of saturated fats, being able to form more of these attractive forces gives them a higher melting point. They can melt, but they tend to be solids at room temperature. Now, one thing you may have heard about saturated fats is that they are unhealthy fats because they increase the risk of developing heart disease and other cardiovascular disease. And this is kind of being debated right now. Recent studies have proposed that there is not enough evidence to conclude that saturated fat increases the risk of heart disease. However, all studies agree that replacing saturated fats with unsaturated fats may indeed reduce the risk of heart disease. So what makes unsaturated fats different then? Unsaturated fatty acids do have at least one carbon-to-carbon -carbon double bond in the hydrocarbon chain. Monounsaturated fatty acids have only one double bond, and polyunsaturated fatty acids have more than one. Unsaturated fatty acids are mostly found in plant sources, like um, oils, like olive oil, or they're also found in avocados or nuts or seeds. They can also be found in animal sources, though, like, say, for example, fatty fish, like salmon. They are usually liquids at room temperature, which is why oils are liquids at room temperature. And keep in mind, avocados, seeds, and nuts may look solid in these pictures, but when their fats are extracted, the fats are liquids. After all, olives are solid fruits, but olive oil is a liquid. Now, the reason that unsaturated fats are liquids at room temperature has to do with those double bonds. Wherever a double bond is found in the hydrocarbon chain, the molecule bends, and by bending, they can no longer stack as close together, minimizing London dispersion forces and their attraction to each other. And it is this difference between saturated and unsaturated fats that somehow make unsaturated fats healthier fats. As a matter of fact, the more double bonds, the healthier the fat. The more it decreases the risk of heart disease, the more it decreases the risk of cardiovascular disease in general. So polyunsaturated fatty acids, for example, are healthier than monounsaturated fatty acids. Some polyunsaturated fatty acids, like say omega-3 fatty acids, like the ones that are found in fish oils, like salmon, are not only excellent for heart health, but are also very important for brain development. So now, having mentioned the healthiest fats, let us now talk about the most unhealthy fats. It's actually kind of strange teaching about trans fats right now, because for the first time in 20 years since I started teaching this course, trans fats are no longer legal in Canada. Health Canada actually banned artificial trans fats, making it illegal for manufacturers to add them to any food sold in Canada. This ban was actually phased in starting in 2018, but ending in September of 2020, which means that by the time that you watch this video, trans fats in Canada should be a thing of the past. So what are trans fats? Well, when we talk about trans fats, we are referring to fats that have artificially altered double bonds that have been altered by a process called hydrogenation. Now, a little bit of trans fats can be found naturally in some animal fats like beef or dairy. 
But the concern has always been the addition of trans fats into processed foods and fast foods that started in the 1950s. And the problem was the use of hydrogenated oils. Hydrogenation is the process by which unsaturated fatty acids are converted to saturated fats. And this is done by adding hydrogen atoms to the fats. The idea is to turn liquid oils into solid fats. And obviously there's a reason to do this. And that reason is that these hydrogenated oils improve the shelf life as well as the appearance and the taste and the texture of foods, which is why they were found in fast foods and in processed foods. And trans fats were actually not the intended product. Trans fats are the result of a side reaction with the catalyst of the hydrogenation process. You see, naturally occurring double bonds in fatty acids are found in what is called a cis configuration. This means that both hydrogens are on the same side of the double bond. When cis fats don't get fully hydrogenated, some get turned into a trans isomer of the fat. That means that now the hydrogens are on opposite sides of the double bond. And even though trans fats are actually unsaturated fats, they are terrible for our health, way worse than saturated fats. Numerous studies have linked these fats to an increase in bad cholesterol levels, which can lead to heart disease and other cardiovascular disease. One of the reasons for this is because our bodies were never designed to digest this substance, so it stays in the bloodstream way longer than ordinary fat. So, man, am I really glad that we no longer have to worry about them, at least not in Canada. Okay. So now let's briefly talk about other types of lipids that are not fats and oils. So phospholipids. Phospholipids are the main component of our plasma membrane, forming the phospholipid bilayer, a layer of phospholipids that basically make up the bulk of the cell membrane, forming a barrier between the outside of the cell and the inside of the cell. A phospholipid molecule has two main parts. Polar head, uh, called the hydrophilic head, because it is able to dissolve in water, and a nonpolar part that is made up of two fatty acid tails, called the hydrophobic tails. The structural formula for the molecule actually looks like this. The hydrophilic head is made up of a polar unit that contains a phosphate group, bonded to a glycerol, which in turn is bonded to two fatty acid chains. And these fatty acids, by the way, can be saturated or unsaturated. And that actually affects how solid versus how fluid the phospholipid bilayer gets. Now, molecules that have both a polar and a nonpolar part are called amphipathic. And because phospholipids are amphipathic and have both a nonpolar section and a polar section, they behave in interesting ways in water. If a drop of phospholipids is dropped in water, they automatically form a sphere called a micelle. And this arrangement minimizes water contact for the hydrophobic tails while maximizing it for the hydrophilic heads that stay outside the micelle and are in contact with the water. In a membrane, phospholipids are arranged into a structure called a bilayer with their phosphate heads facing the water and their tails pointing towards the interior of the bilayer, so they are only in contact with other tails. And this organization prevents the hydrophobic tails from coming into contact with water while maximizing water contact both inside and outside for the hydrophilic heads. Steroids are another class of lipid molecules. They can easily be identified by their structure of four fused rings. And I know they don't have a fatty acid and don't look like the other lipids, but steroids are included in the lipid category because they are also hydrophobic and insoluble in water. All steroids have these four linked carbon rings, and several of them have a hydroxyl functional group attached to one of the rings. Cholesterol is the most common steroid. It is mainly made in the liver and serves as the starting material for many steroid hormones. Cholesterol also serves as the starting material for other important molecules in the body, like bile, which you learned about when you learned about the digestive system last year. It is also a key component of cell membranes. 
it plays a role in altering their fluidity and stabilizing them. And of course, cholesterol is also found in the bloodstream. And blood levels of cholesterol are what we often hear about at the doctor's office or in news reports and usually in association with heart disease. Cholesterol in the blood can be either good for cardiovascular health, uh, this is called the high density or HDL form of cholesterol, or bad for cardiovascular health in its low density or LDL form. And finally, waxes. Waxes are a long chain of fatty acids attached to either alcohols or hydrocarbon rings. Their main function is to provide a waterproof protective coating for plants and animals that produce it. Waxes can be found on leaves of plants and on the skin, hair, or feathers of animals, where they function to keep these structures pliable and waterproof. Also, one of the best known natural waxes is beeswax. And in this case, the waxes are used to make up the structure of a beehive. And so that's it. That's it for today's lesson. Don't forget to complete your lesson quiz, and I will talk to you soon.